I'm at TCL's very large show hall at IFA 2022, and the company has divided the booth into different sections. But the one I'm going to be most interested in is the TCL Mini LED section. And the company has used its press conference at E5222 to announce the world's largest mini LED TV in the shape of the 98 inch C935. This TV will have more than 2300 local dimming zones and is capable of a peak brightness of 2000 nits. But if you can't stretch your budget to the flagship C935, then the company is also doing a 98 inch mini LED TV in a step down model, and that's the 98 inch C735. This will have a peak brightness of 700 nits. This will have 192 local dimming zones. And other interesting display technologies I saw at TCL's show hall are the 34-inch 165Hz mini LED monitor in the section that is dedicated to the display technologies that are being developed by CSOT. There's another section here that is demonstrating the display, the sound, and also the software technologies built by the company. TCL also displayed a 136-inch 4K cinema wall and also just to the side there are a range of mini LED televisions with 144Hz refresh rate. Hey, are you Vincent? Yes, I am yes. indeed. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, I'm following you on YouTube. Alright, uh, listen, I'm filming something. Yes. Is it okay if I ask you just one question in the footage? Oh yeah, no problem. Have you seen anything that you really like at the TCL show hall? I must, must say the mini LED TV, I like it very much. Uh, I must say it's on the right contrast. That's Fantastic, great. thank you. <laughs> okay. Have a good show, thank you. Thanks. All right. Now I've been walking miles and miles at this IFA show covering all the different technologies and I'm really glad to see this air conditioning unit that TCL has called the Fresh In AC. So come visit TCL's exciting show hall at E5222. I've put a link in the YouTube description below. Thanks again for your support. At E5222, I also saw the largest OLED TV in the world, namely the 97-inch G2 OLED EVO Gallery Edition from LG Electronics. Now, some of you may remember that the South Korean brand launched the 97-inch G2 at the beginning of the year. But because the company decided not to carry a physical presence at CES 2022, this was actually the first time I've actually seen this massive OLED TV with my very own eyes. All the self-emissive strengths of OLED display technology were on show here, namely true blacks, vibrant colors, and wide viewing angles, just in a larger format than before, thanks to efforts by OLED panel supplier LG Display to expand the choices of screen sizes available to consumers. Let's hope next year there will be even smaller OLED panels for monitor use. And because OLED doesn't require a backlight, the bezel surrounding the screen, even one as big as the 97 G2, not to mention the chassis, can be sculpted to be proportionately slim. In fact, just like on other sizes of the LG G2, when inspected from the sides, the thickness remained uniform from top to bottom, making it ideal for wall mounting. The LG 97 G2 features the company's high-end Alpha 9 Gen 5 4K processor, which delivered improved upscaling and smoother gradation compared to previous iterations, based on our testing of the LG C2 and G2. Of course, such a gigantic OLED won't come cheap. The UK price seems to have been set at £25,000, which doesn't seem too bad considering how the pound has depreciated in recent weeks against other major currencies. Then again, given the spiraling prices of electricity, can you even afford to turn the television on and watch House of the Dragons in HDR? Anyway, potential buyers of the 97-inch LG G2 will be pleased to know that the television comes with a 5-year warranty which includes the panel although it's unclear whether OLED burn-in will be covered. For those of you who are still worried about OLED burn-in, however small the risk may be as long as you don't watch CNN 12 hours a day, Samsung Electronics has also unveiled a 98-inch Neo QLED TV at IFA 2022, namely the QN100B which uses mini-LED backlight technology. In spite of the company's push towards 8K, the 98QN100B is only 4K in resolution, but this is good news because the reduced pixel density actually allows more light to pass through. The TV has been rated by Samsung as Quantum HDR5000, capable of reaching up to 5000 nits of peak brightness. 
although based on previous experience of reviewing Samsung QLED televisions, the actual peak brightness is usually lower once calibrated to the 65 white point in the most accurate picture preset. Nevertheless, the show floor sample did look searingly bright. We have high hopes that it will still exceed 2500 nits on a 10% window after calibration. Other features include a stunning full metal design with an impressively slim chassis, as well as a 6.4.4 channel speaker system delivering 120 watt audio output, which will also work well with compatible Samsung soundbars through the company's Q-Symphony technology. The 98-inch Samsung QN100B isn't exactly cheap though. List price in Korea is 45 million won, which converts to more than 30,000 US dollars, even more expensive than the LG 97G2. So if you're a penny pincher like me and want to buy a super-sized TV yet still be able to afford the electricity to turn it on, the 98-inch TCL C735, which should cost around 7,000 euros, is looking more and more appealing. Moving away from size, my favorite subject. Another mini trend seen at IFA 2022 is OLED's inevitable march towards higher refresh rates for gaming. Samsung finally officially launched its G8 Odyssey OLED monitor, which uses the same 34-inch QD OLED panel found on the Dell Alienware AW3423DW we reviewed a few months ago. Featuring a 21:9 aspect ratio, ultra-wide QHD resolution of 3440x1440 and 1800R curvature, the Samsung QD OLED monitor is also blessed with near-instantaneous pixel response time and can support up to 175Hz refresh rate. Compared to the Alienware QD OLED monitor, I prefer the central metallic stand on Samsung's version. Although the South Korean manufacturer's decision to implement micro HDMI 2.1 and mini DisplayPort 1.4 instead of full-sized inputs is more controversial. At the other end of messy Berlin where IFA is held, LG showcased a 45-inch 21.9 Ultra Gear gaming monitor with 240Hz refresh rate, model number 45GR95QE. That's a mouthful. It appears to be using the same OLED panel as the Corsair Xenion Flex, which broke cover at Gamescom just one week earlier. But unlike Corsair's version, which could be bent manually, the LG 45GR95QE features a fixed curvature of 800R. A 45-inch screen and a resolution of 3440x1440 meant that PPI was on the low side. But what bothered me more was the matte anti-glare coating, which diluted contrast significantly under the bright lights at LG's IFA show hall. That's just my personal opinion though. Some of you prefer matte screens, some of you prefer glossy screens, and I am definitely in the glossy camp. Unfortunately at IFA, I didn't have the chance to sit down and experience the high motion clarity made possible by the 240Hz OLED panel on the monitor, but I've previously tested another 240Hz OLED screen. The world's first in fact, and I've published my findings in my review video here.